box. This is Shane. 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 Listen, I, I just asked, uh, I asked Shane to come up here tonight. I had a student, uh, he won uh, one of the contests tonight, and he was really excited. He grabbed this prize, and he opened it up, and, uh, well, he came out, and he brought it to me, and it was a, a pack of gum, but it was completely empty. There was no gum in it. And I told this poor little boy, he was crying, tears in his eyes. I said, I'm sorry, Elijah, but Shane has been stealing gum all semester long. This is true. It's true. It's true. He's a gum stealer. Just one piece at a time, though. So we just, I brought him up to publicly shame him and... I mean, there are other packs of gum that <laughs> might still have gum in them. All right, you guys, here's an empty pack of gum eaten yeah. by Shane Peterson. <laughs> that could be worth a lot of money someday. He might even autograph that for you afterwards. I don't know. Nope. <laughs> well, guys, there's a good chance Shane will be famous because he is so great at multiple things. We're talking about greatness. That's my intro. Uh... We're talking about one word, and this week's word is greater. And I think when we get to this topic of great, of greatness, of, of what it means to be great, a lot of us, we, uh, you know, we've seen this term thrown around, the GOAT. Who is the GOAT? Greatest of all time. And so people will debate who the GOAT is in different topics, different areas of life. Uh, I, the most obvious one that I think all of you might have some opinion on, LeBron James versus Michael Jordan. If you, are in, if you are in the LeBron James camp, just make some noise. If you are in the Michael Jordan camp, make some noise. Oh, okay, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, oh, okay, oh, you wanna go Steph Curry? I'm all about Steph Curry, all right. LeBron James or Steph Curry? LeBron James. Steph Curry. A lot of the girls, a lot of the girls really like Steph Curry. All right, all right. All right, what about, what if we went, uh, what if we went Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? Let's go, Tom Brady. Peyton Manning. All right. I'm all about Peyton. All right, the goat, the goat of food. Cheeseburger or pizza? Cheeseburger. Pizza. Whoa. Wow. That's pretty good. I, I think pizza won out there. Oh, oh, okay, though. All right. Let's get things heated. Uh, Chipotle or Qdoba? Who says Chipotle? Yeah, Chipotle. Who says... Who says, who says Qdoba? No, no. You're wrong, you're wrong. Chipotle is the goat, all right? Taco Bell, Shane says Taco Bell. Okay, how many of you would eat Taco Bell over both those? Disgusting. It's not even real meat. It's not even real meat. All right, all right. All right, so talking, talking about greatness, obviously in this world there are billions of people, which means there are billions of opinions. And so everyone has their own opinion when it comes to the topic of greatness. Everybody has different factors that they think of, what they think makes something or someone great, especially when it comes to greater than, when you start comparing. So uh, let me see here really quick. Um, if you got uh, a LeBron James fan out here that has a, a statement, like you have a reason why you think LeBron James is the GOAT, raise your hand if you want to come up here really quick. You? All right. You're a basketball fan? Get on up here. All right. If you think Michael Jordan is the GOAT, and you got a reason you want to say, come on up here. I need a, I need a Michael Jordan fan. What? Right there, Elijah. Come on up. Do you want to come up? You don't know who Michael Jordan is? Okay, I need somebody that knows who Michael Jordan is. Colin, Colin. He's got a Jordan jersey. I got to bring him up. Or a Jordan sweatshirt. Okay. 
Zen, I don't have you on mic. Here, let me just, look, we'll just do this. Here, speaking of that, why do you think? Why is LeBron the GOAT? Because he's on the Lakers. He's on, he's on the Lakers? Yeah. All right, all right. Michael Jordan, why is he the GOAT? Oh, he broke so many records in only six years. Okay, okay. You guys, thank you. Give them a hand. You guys can take a seat. All right. All right. Every, everybody, it it doesn't matter what the topic, what it comes down to, everybody's going to have a different opinion because they have different criteria for what it means to be great. Start thinking in your head right now of who are some of the greatest people in your life that you know. People that you know personally, don't shout them out. Just think if you had to make a list in your head, like one through five, who are the greatest people that you know? One through five. It could be a mom, a dad, a teacher, a coach, a cousin, a brother, a sister. It could be anybody in your life. Now, if if between all three of our campuses we were to write these names out and everybody put their names like into a big pile, the diversity in those names, the the amount of differing people in those names, it it would be huge. I mean, there might be a little crossover here and there. Um, You know, I know most of you would probably have Andrew on that list because Andrew's really awesome. Um, But you know, for the most part, everybody would have just a way different list from the person sitting next to you and the person in the back row and the front row, everybody's list would look different because we all have a different personal criteria for what it means to be greatness. All of us, we all have a different opinion about what that looks like. I wanna tell you tonight, uh, in, in this world, in this world, it's normal to seek after greatness. And I'm not necessarily talking about fame and fortune and money, but more about what it means to be like one of those people that you thought of tonight, one of those five people that have made an impact in your life, that have been great to you, that have been great for you, that have helped you in hard times. We want to be that for other people. I mean, at the core, we, we seek greatness, I think, because we want to be great for other people, especially as believers. As believers in Christ, there's something in us where we want to be great for the kingdom, At least that's God's desire for us. That's the plan. When you start to read through the New Testament, um, one of the verses that sticks out to me, Matthew 20, verse 26. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Jesus lays it out right there. He knows people want to be great. And he tells his group of disciples, if you want to be great, you need to be a servant. Think about that in your life right now. Who are you serving You can think of five people that have been great to you, and I bet it's because in some way or another they have served you. You guys all right over here? You guys good? You with me? Okay, let's keep tracking. Who are the people in your life that you can think of right now that you are serving in some way, that you are loving in some way, that you are going above and beyond the way Jesus has called us to, to love? Greatness is a process. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. Nobody is really great in this world. Because in this world of differing opinions, nobody's truly reached greatness because somebody's always gonna pass you. There's, for Michael Jordan, there's always gonna be the next LeBron James. And then for LeBron James, there's always gonna be the next him. There's always gonna be these next people that will surpass the former greatness. Nobody can stay on top forever. So don't strive to be great. Strive to be greater. For me, that was the word I I was thinking of when we were thinking through this one word series. Um, It it was kind of crazy. I I sent out this email to our leaders letting them know that we were gonna be doing this series. And and one of our youth leaders emailed back and said she'd been thinking and praying about um, there's these bracelets that you can buy and that you can make. And they, they look like this. They got like a little ring on them. They're called uh, My Intent Bracelets, and they go along with this one word theme. But you put your one word for the year on these bracelets. 
And so that way you can kind of look at it throughout the year and be reminded of what are you chasing after this year? What is it you are seeking to do in your life? What's your one word, your one focus? And so for me, I I thought about it for a while. I I didn't want to rush this. And the one word I kept coming back to was greater. Because there's something inside of me that wants to make a greater impact in this world. Because I know that we've been called to something greater than what the world can offer. And and there's verses that kept popping out to me. And I'm going to read some of those verses to you guys tonight. But there's verses that use this word greater. And they just, they struck home for me this year. And I knew this is something that I, I need to seek in my life. One of those verses comes from John chapter 3, verse 30. And it says, he must become greater, I must become less. These words were spoken by John the Baptist. He came before Jesus. He was actually Jesus' cousin. And he came to proclaim that Jesus was coming. And all these people thought he was the Messiah. They thought he was the Savior. And they kept saying, yeah, you're the guy, you're the guy. You're going to lead Israel. We're going to follow you. And he kept saying, no, 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 no. It's not me, it's Jesus. He kept pointing people back to Jesus. And he says this line in that moment. He says, he must become greater. I must become less. So when I chose that word greater for 2019, that's what I wanted this year to be about for me. I wanted it to be about pointing people back to Jesus. I want to make his name greater. How are you doing that? Do you have a plan? Do you have an idea? Do you have thoughts in your head that you know, man, this would be a great way to point people to Jesus? Think through that tonight. Another verse that I thought of, John 14, 12 through 14. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. This is Jesus talking. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done. Do you know the works that Jesus did? I mean, he he literally raised people from the dead. He did the miraculous. He healed. He fed people with just a couple loaves of bread and some fish. He did incredible miracles. And so when he says that, that's what I've always thought this verse meant. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it, so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. We can do greater works. That blows my mind. Jesus is telling us, all of us in here, this is for us. We can do greater works than even he did. Now, that... For me, that has been one of the most challenging verses of my life. I have had a hard time wrapping my mind around that because I've never healed anybody. I've never raised anybody from the dead. I've never fed 5,000 people. I don't think any of you in here have either. What are these greater works? And it hit me today, I was actually, uh, I was reading something that one of my friends, he's a youth pastor in Colorado, he posted this, and I wanted to share it with you. In the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 through 20, if you want to go read it later, we won't have it up here. But Jesus heals a man possessed by demons. This man, he was known, like well known throughout his town that he had demons living inside of him. He was demonic. Jesus heals a man possessed by demons. Afterwards, the people begged Jesus to go away from them. They begged Jesus to go away from them. If you just saw a miracle, would you beg the person who did the miracle to go away, to get out of here? I don't think so. That's another thing that's hard for me to wrap my mind around, but for some reason, that's how these people reacted. And once again, if if we're not in the situation, it's hard to imagine how we would truly react But that's always been a struggle for me to figure out why would they send him away? But they did. They were scared. They sent him away. Jesus leaves, and he tells the man, the man wants to go with him. 
He says, Jesus, take me with you. All these people, they have hated me my whole life because I've been sick with this demon possession. Just let me go with you. Jesus tells the man to go to the people instead. He sends him back to those people. The healed man, the healed man then begins sharing what God has done. And it says that all the people were amazed. They weren't impressed by the miracle Jesus did. They were scared. But when they heard the man's testimony about Jesus and what he had done, that was what amazed them. That is the greater work that each and every one of us is called to do. If you know Jesus, if you've given your life to him, you have a testimony. You know that once you were dead and now you are alive in Christ, you can share that just like this man. You can go and do these greater things. You can bring people into the kingdom of God, into eternity, into life to the full, into freedom from their sins, their past, and their shame. That is the greater work that we are being called to. That's why the Bible says we're called to be kingdom workers, to do the greatest work of all, to help people know that there is a Savior who has died for them and wants them to have life and have it to the full and have it forever. That's the greatest work you can do. That's greater than anything Bill Gates can do in this world. That's greater than anything Warren Buffett can do in this world. Yeah, they got a lot of money. They can do some good stuff, but it is temporary. The greater works that you're called to, it is eternal. Do you understand that, John? You get me? Yeah. All right, good. Good. This is important. He wants to use us. He doesn't want you to just sit in a room, hear a message, and go home without being changed. He wants you to go out and tell your story because there are people out there that need to hear it and there are people out there that will be amazed by what he has done in your life and they will want to be a part of this kingdom. That is the greater work that you're being called to. It's greater than anything you can give your life to in this world. It's greater than money. It's greater than fame. It's greater than sex. It's greater than drugs. It's greater than alcohol. All these things that we think are so great that we want to chase after in this world, they are temporary and they do not last. But this work, being a part of helping somebody find the freedom in Christ, that's eternal. That is a greater calling than anything else in this world. Find a way to use whatever gifts and talents you have to serve the kingdom and to serve the people around you. In 2019, choose every day to be greater for his kingdom than your kingdom. Choose to die to yourself because every day you have that choice. You have that choice to serve your kingdom or to build his kingdom. Every choice you make, it adds up over time, and there's two categories. You're either building your kingdom or you're building his kingdom. Start breaking your day down. Write it in a journal. Write every decision you made down that day and ask yourself, did that decision, was it for me or was it for him? Was it to make my name great or was it to make his name great? If you want to chase greatness, you need discipline. And it starts there, evaluating every decision you make through the day. Last story I want to tell you. Luke 16, verses 1 through 12. Parable of the shrewd manager. Jesus told this, told this story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs. One day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said... What's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you are going to be fired. This guy, he's done for. He's going to be fired. Get your report in order. The manager thought to himself, hmm, now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches, and I'm too proud to beg. 
ah, I know how to ensure that I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I'm fired. So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much do you owe him? The man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. Yeah, I know, that means nothing to us. It's a lot of money, all right? It's a lot of money. Oh, olive oil, big whoop, okay. So the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. He cut his bill in half. This is all kind of on the, you know, on the down low. Like, he's not telling, like, his boss that he's doing this. Because what's he got to lose? He's getting fired anyway. And how much do you owe my employer, he asked the next man. I owe him 1,000 bushels of wheat. Once again, what's that equal in dollars? I have no idea. Here, the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. Boy, he just saved 200 bushels of wheat. Hot dog. That's a deal. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal. I love that. He called him a dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. The rich man's not even mad. Like, he, he finds out what his manager's doing, and he's like, man, I, I'm impressed. It's pretty good. He realizes, like, you're, you're just being shrewd. That's a nice way of saying sneaky. And it's true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of light. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your earthly possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. I don't know about you, but in 2019... I don't want to be the same as I was in 2018. I want these greater responsibilities Jesus talks about here. I want to take ownership of the fact that me as an individual, he's given me some gifts and he's given me some abilities and he's given me some money in this world. I want to take ownership of the fact that he's given me these things to use for his kingdom and not my own. I don't want to just do what I did in 2018. I want to figure out a way to be like this shrewd manager. And I want to maximize what he's given me and do it the best I can for the kingdom of God and not myself. That's what this parable says. A lot of people get confused by it. They get bogged down. They think, oh, it's, Jesus is saying it's good to be dishonest. No. The lesson is... Use anything and everything in your power and your ability to build up the kingdom of God. Do that because that is the kingdom that will last. That is the kingdom that is eternal. There is no end. This world, the time is running out on this world. We don't know when. We don't know what it's going to look like exactly. But we know this world at some point, it is done. But his kingdom, that's the kingdom that lasts forever. How are you going to maximize what God has given you to build his kingdom in 2019? Do greater things for him. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for how you speak to us through it. God, I pray tonight for some of the discussions in small groups that we would chase after this idea of greatness for your kingdom and not our own. God, I ask that you help us to see the truth in your words tonight. Um, God, I pray for just wisdom for all of us, wisdom to seek after you and to know you more every day and to live for you in a greater way. We love you, God. In and pray, amen.